Now, do we need to re-record everything I've just said or how do I go with that? Welcome to Bitcoin Basics with your hosts, Faris and Gordon. Visit bitcoinbasics.help if you need help buying and securing your Bitcoin. Okay, ready? Yep. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin Basics podcast. I am your host, Ferris, here with my co-host, Gordon. It is the 6th of October today. And, oh, correction, it's the 5th of October today, sorry. And the price of Bitcoin is hovering just above $49,000 per Bitcoin. That's 2,032 Satoshis per dollar. And Gordon, what are we looking at today? What is our question? Well, Faris, this is your question or your topic. Um, good suggestion about Bitcoin mining, Bitcoin hash rate, and especially the exodus from China. But before we get there, what, what does hash rate mean? Yes, this is something I saw popping up a lot on Twitter is um, how the hash rate is um, recovering after China banned miners. And this was pretty big news because... And it was positive news because mining was not centralized, but um, really constant, heavily concentrated in China. And especially with Bitmain, their largest, um, one of the largest mining companies in the world. And now as it's moved on, we're seeing mining pick up around the world. So hash rate from my very limited understanding of what works behind the scenes in front of my screen is essentially... Um, I think email is probably the best explanation. If I were to send you an email, there is a calculation working where essentially it's going through a formula to prove that your email is your email address is real, my email address is real, and it allows that transaction to take place. Otherwise, we just have we'd be inundated with spam every single day. Um, so with the Bitcoin blockchain, um, the proof of work is basically something that's difficult to a solution that's difficult to come to, but, but very easy to prove. So when I send you Bitcoins, Gordon, um, there is that same mathematical formula working behind the scenes. So any computer can solve that problem. It's just hash power, um, which is brute force computing. Once one computer solves it, everyone else can easily confirm, confirm it. That computer that solves it gets rewarded with the Bitcoin rewards. And they get the highest amount of rewards, and then the subsequent computers get less and less of said reward. Um, the hash rate is how hard is it to solve? If you make it too hard to solve, then it's not worth it. It's not worth putting your electricity and your computer into it. Um, if you make it too easy to solve, then too many Bitcoins are released too quickly. So somehow, and this is what I want to ask you, um, Satoshi Nakamoto figured out a way of averaging block um, blocks to go through every 10 minutes. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, like, and share so we can find others like yourself. Now, do we need to re-record everything I've just said or how do I go with that? No, that was good. Uh, actually good. The only, uh, you didn't say anything wrong. The only term you got wrong, I think, was you confused difficulty with hash rate, but uh, yeah. What, yes, your, thank you. Your explanation was spot on. Um, I like to think of it as a Rubik's cube. So uh, you have a Rubik's cube that's jumbled up and uh, you solve that Rubik's cube. It's very easy to verify that someone solved the Rubik's cube because you just look at it, you know, all the colors are on the same, but uh, you don't know where that person started from. You don't know how long it took them, blah, blah, blah. So uh, something that's um, relatively difficult to do, but easy to verify. And that's basically what Faris was talking about, this uh, computational puzzle that these Bitcoin miners do that are just, you know, computers basically. So that's what hash rate is. Hash rate is just a fancy word for computational power, CPU power, um, you know, um, all that going into solving these puzzles. And as Faris mentioned, Satoshi Nakamoto designed Bitcoin in terms of 10 minute blocks. Now, why 10 minutes? Why wasn't it five minutes? Why wasn't it 20 minutes? Well, um, 10 minutes seemed to be uh, the choice. And every two weeks that's adjusted. So every two weeks or 2,048 blocks, I think, 
um, that is adjusted so that, for example, if more miners come onto the network, let's say a country opens up, like, for example, just a quick distraction, Iran actually uh, unbanned Bitcoin a couple of days ago. And around about 7% of the world's uh, cryptocurrency mining comes from Iran. So let's say a country unbans Bitcoin or whatever, and there's 7% or 10% more hash rate goes onto the network. Well, when that next two-week difficulty is adjusted, then those computational puzzles, those Rubik's Cubes, are made more difficult by the Bitcoin network so that these blocks are going to still maintain that 10-minute average. Now, by the way, it's not 10 minutes. It's sometimes it's got down to about seven minutes. Other times it's gone way down to 13, 40 minutes. But on average, the Bitcoin network adjusts, adjusts the difficulty every two weeks to make sure it's on an average of 10-minute blocks. So, Gordon, when we say it adjusts, is this something that the miners have to do? Or is it like when your phone gets an automatic update and you just have to install it? Was it pre-programmed into the network for this to happen? Yeah, the Bitcoin protocol uh, automatically adjusts it. So the miners don't have to do anything. They would just find out when the Bitcoin difficulty is adjusted. And you, on that Clark Moody dashboard that you brought up at the front of the show, that actually has the the uh, current difficulty and when the next difficulty is, the next block. Um, yeah, the miners will just find out, you know, the difficulties change either up or down. And there are various sites where you can predict what the difficulty is going to be next time. And so that um, people who are mining, because it is a multi-million dollar, if not multi-billion dollar operation, they actually look at stuff like difficulty. How many miners do we need to increase or decrease based on the next difficulty? So when um, China banned Bitcoin, how did that affect the hash rate and mining? Um, uh, the short answer is I don't know. I don't really follow mining that carefully. But yeah, when you release um, a significant amount. Now, a lot of people said China was up to a 60% a couple of years ago. I think it was around about 30 to 40% recently. If you're removing an enormous amount of hash power, let's say it was 30% from the network, that's going to cause the difficulty to actually decrease because there are less miners. There's less hash power in the Bitcoin network. So what is that? What is the effect of having the difficulty decrease significantly in the Bitcoin network? Well, it makes it cheaper to mine because the difficulty is a lot less. So what you'll find is the difficulty would drop significantly so more miners, maybe people sitting on the sideline, maybe even retail people and people who are doing it as a hobby, now find that, well, the difficulty is so low, it's actually now profitable for me to turn on that Bitcoin miner in my garage or whatever it was. But then what happens in another two weeks, because all the flood of miners have come onto the network, the difficulty is going to increase again to readjust for all those miners coming onto the network. So it's a sort of a cat and mouse game between you know, miners joining and uh, going off the network. Cool. Thank you, Gordon. I think that's, well, that has definitely answered my questions. Um, is there anything else you want to add to our listeners that they should be aware of when it comes to mining? It's something we tend to avoid because you don't really need to know too much what's happening under the hood. From a user, you don't really need to know. Um, certainly when there are high fees and you're sending Bitcoin from an exchange to say your hardware wallet, you certainly do notice when there's a congestion in the Bitcoin network, but no, from an average point of point of view of a user, there's really nothing uh, to do and nothing to sort of worry about. Um, but from a, I guess from an ideological point of view, it is good to see these other countries like El Salvador with, um, the geothermal mining tapping into volcanoes. Uh, coming onto the network. And, you know, if you've got countries like Iran providing 7% of the Bitcoin network hashing power, that's fantastic. It's not centralized in China, the US, or these other countries. Um, it's a benefit for everyone. It's a benefit because it's decentralized. So Bitcoin is harder, more robust to ban and, and kill. Um, and it's obviously also benefiting the users of that country or, or, or the miners as well. Um, and uh, yeah, from a user point of view, no, it doesn't affect you really. You shouldn't really need to worry about it. But from a from a longevity of Bitcoin point of view, 
the more decentralized mining is, the better, basically. Cool. Thank you very much, Gordon. Can agree with you more there. Um, any further thoughts? No. No? All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, please contact us at bitcoinbasics.help where you can post your own question and we will answer it on air. Thanks for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, subscribe and share so we can spread this educational content to others like yourself. Visit bitcoinbasics.help. Disclaimer. Any content provided by CoinCompass is for educational and informational purposes only and is not investment, legal, tax, or any other professional advice. A qualified professional should be consulted before making any financial decisions. CoinCompass will at times recommend certain products, services, and technologies, but these are opinions based upon our own or podcast guests' experience and not endorsements. We take no liability for out-of-date or inaccurate information, software bugs, manufacturing errors, technology misuse, or issues involving third parties. Visit coincompass.com for more information and please contact us.